Okay, very good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to our Think Tank 2022 uh, public uh, lecture series. Uh, this is our second public lecture series. The first one uh, was about uh, peace and nation building in Afghanistan. And uh, this uh, second uh, public lecture series will focus on peace and uh, nation building in uh, East Timor, Timor Leste, in Khmer Timor Khangkat. And uh, we have a great honor and pleasure to have Excellency Ambassador uh, Erman Nigildo uh, Kupa Lopez. Uh, he has a, a great experience, a wide experience uh, relating to peace uh, and reconciliations uh, in Timor Leste and in general. Uh, he was a special envoy uh, of Prime Minister uh, Hun Sen from the Universal Peace Federation and the chairman of International Association of Parliamentarians for Peace. Uh, aside from being a private business consultant, uh, he previously served as the special advisor uh, for South Korean Ambassador 2008 and private advisor to Prime Minister uh, Sana uh, Gasmau, uh, 2011. Uh, he has been the president of the Millennium Democratic Party for 17 years. Uh, he, has a, he was elected as a spokesperson of many political parties coalition, uh, including uh, Bluku uh, Pluka Modo, 2012, uh, Bluku uh, Unidete, a uh, popular BUP, 2015-2017, Forum Democratico Nacional, FDN 2017, and Frente Democratico Nacional, 2018. Uh, Excellency Lopez uh, received his uh, Master of Social Science, majoring uh, in Devel Development Studies from the South Bank University, London. Uh, in England in uh, 2002. So I, I think he has been working for different political parties. So he's a great candidate in terms of how he can reconcile the differences, how he can build uh, a national unity. And uh, without further ado, I would like to invite Excellency uh, Lopez uh, to deliver your uh, remarks uh, with regards to the peace and nation building in uh, Timor Leste. Please, Excellency. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Chimbripso. Uh, Chimbripso, and good morning for uh, 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 Your Excellency, President of the ABA. This is a great honor and pleasure for me as um, ambassador of Timor-Leste to the uh, Kingdom of Cambodia. And uh, you all, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, first of all, I would like to address my uh, gratitude for Your Excellency, Dr. Chanarit, for to inviting me to share uh, my experiences and country experiences under the theme of nice and, and peace building. And also, I would like to thank you for your excellency for uh, AVA and then think tank for 2022. And you are uh, appointed as a, a special envoy from Sanda Chlaichu Hussein for to cooperate with the Universal Peace Federation. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it plan to be have a, a big event. It's, not, it's going to be in South Korea. Uh, 2022. Well, uh, here I would like to uh, uh, start and highlight from the, especially for the uh, history of Timor Leste. And so where we are, and now uh, um, in the post colonial uh, period until uh, we restore our independence. Well, here is a uh, Timor Leste is a, you know that is a one of a, uh, the country, the small country, 
is a newborn in the 21st century uh, in, a, uh, in a one of the uh, a small island uh, close to in between, between uh, Australia and uh, uh, Indonesia. So our Timor-Leste is a capital, is capital is Dili. Timor-Leste capital is Dili. The island is uh, not very big, only around 14,000 uh, square kilometer. And uh, we uh, adopted the uh, Portuguese and Tetun as a official language. And uh, uh, the majority of the population is uh, we are in Catholic because of the, it was colonized by Portuguese. That's why majority is uh, around 97% is a Catholic, Roman Catholic. And uh, uh, we have uh, that is called is a uh, one is this island is a, uh, uh, what we call is a, uh, small island in two nations. The one uh, island is uh, close to the one half of the island uh, is under Dutch colony. It belonged to Indonesia. And another one is Timor-Lese before it's Timor-Portuguese. So well, uh, uh, around, uh, uh, nine, oh, around 1515 uh, to up to 1999, it's uh, under Portuguese colony. Portuguese was occupied the Timor-Leste for almost 450 years. Uh, the most longest colonial period in the world. So then uh, uh, in come to the, in 1974, there is having a Carnation revolution in Portugal. That is uh, to the end of dictatorship of uh, uh, Salazar, uh, dictatorship and bring to the transition democracy. That is the allow for uh, all the former Portuguese colony uh, from uh, Angola, Mozambique, Cabo Verde, and San Tome, including Timor-Leste. So allow to have a self-determination. So then uh, in 90, uh, early 1975, uh, Timor Leste start to um, have a preparation uh, to be as a uh, to proclaim uh, the in the uh, to proclaim Timor Leste as an independent country. Uh, so, it, however, uh, because of the situation and condition at that time is not uh, much uh, allowed, and so uh, then we have uh, established the political party at that time without any proper conditions and uh, because lack of human resources. And you know, 450 years is under uh, colonialism and not much more uh, human resources, not much any proper institution and infrastructure and everything. So then we come with a heavy, uh, it's brief civil war before we declare unilaterally independence in 1975. So the, the differences between association and political party, then by the end is the, uh, one of the big movement is called Fretelin. It's a one of the Fretelin who are uh, uh, dominated party uh, at that time in 1975. Then because uh, then uh, Fretelin preparing for declaration for independence on the 28th of November, in 1975, unilaterally, Timor-Leste declared independence. Declared independence. Uh, but because of uh, the declaring independence and because of the consequences of the Cold War, uh, including the problem of Indochina, as you all know that so the interest of the Western country that is the, is a scary for the it will be another communist appearing in, in, uh, between uh, Indonesia and Australia. Then the West uh, supporting uh, at that time Suharto regime under the president of Suharto. Uh, they then decided invited Timor-Leste on the 7th of December 
1975. And we declared unilateral independence in 28th of November in 1975. Then after uh, uh, six or seven days, then uh, Indonesian military uh, invited uh, Timor-Leste with fully support, 90% support by the West, weapons, uh, financial and everything, supporting uh, the Suarto regime occupied uh, the Timor-Leste. And uh, the result of the uh, invasion uh, was uh, bring the lots of uh, consequences and uh, we until to 1999 uh, we sacrificed almost 250 million people uh, 250,000 sorry 250,000 was uh, uh, was uh, sacrificed to uh, uh, under the Indonesian occupation and so then uh, uh, we are starting in 1975, our uh, uh, Fretelin himself, uh, one of the dominant party. And so we uh, reorganize our population to, uh, to fighting against uh, uh, of uh, Indonesian rule uh, uh, in, in that times. And the uh, uh, situation is very hard. Uh, let me uh, say that it's quite uh, unique uh, unique uh, uh, resistance uh, in in a uh, in the twenty first century uh, because of our location also a small country and location is uh, comparing to like uh, Indochina or other Africa or Latin American continent the region is a uh, it will be allow for geographically can a neighboring country can support uh, uh, support the guerrilla fighter. But in Timor Leste, it's very hard because of uh, one of the neighboring countries occupied and other neighbor also uh, have a cooperation. Uh, so that's why difficult visas only in the middle. Uh, so we stand up and organizing uh, by ourselves. And uh, then uh, all the population uh, uh, went to the jungles and the mountains and our guerrilla fighters, yes, but be able to organize this and uh, get involved with all the people uh, in a uh, clandestine movement, movement and a diplomatic front. Then the Timor Leste before um, we to 1999, we have a uh, three movement. It's uh, called the movement of the is a is a what we call is a military um, military resistance is a Valentil is a guerrilla fighters and we Valentil is organizing uh, for the people in the cities uh, we, we call is clandestines how to support in the logistic and everything to the guerrilla fighter and they come to the and we have another diplomatic uh, uh, diplomatic uh, front it's under the leadership of uh, uh, of Susera uh, Musorta and other uh, leader of Timor Leste, and we continue to campaigning for the level of international community to award that is a what is a uh, Indonesian military uh, down in Timor Leste is totally unacceptable. So then uh, uh, come to after by the end in. 1999, uh, uh, the UN under United Nations, uh, under United Nations, uh, they then decide uh, to conduct the referendum uh, in the Timor Leste. Uh, if I'm not wrong, that is a UNAM is called uh, uh, is uh, the under the Security Council give a mandate to the uh, UNAM. Uh, to conduct a referendum is same as like in Cambodia. If before is like uh, Timor Leste is UNAMED, in Cambodia yeah, is a uh, UNAMED or something, United Nations Mission in Timor Leste uh, to conduct this. And uh, uh, finally, the, uh, the uh, UN organized and uh, almost 78% uh, uh, overwhelmingly uh, 
people of Timor Leste decided uh, to have an uh, independence. And they only 21%, 21.9%, uh, they decided continue to uh, continue to uh, part of uh, Indonesia uh, at that time. And uh, so by the, by the these uh, things and uh, uh, for after the landslide uh, victory by the referendum, uh, the situation was uh, uh, very difficult for Timor Leste because of the uh, the pro-Indonesian militias, uh, which established by the Indonesian military, to destroy total all the territory, territory, then uh, uh, infrastructure and the roads, electricity, everything will destroy by the militias uh, pro-Indonesian pro-Indonesian and our infrastructure, especially in capital Delhi, is almost 97% totally collapsed, destroyed. And the rest of the other uh, uh, municipality and the district is uh, not escaped from the, uh, from the, from the uh, destroyed by the militias. And uh, only around one or two uh, district is have a only 20% to destroy, but the rest of the country is totally uh, is a ruin uh, by the pro-Indonesian military before they left and uh, Timor Leste facing a very difficult situation at that time and uh, all the people of Timor Leste also uh, crossed the border to Indonesia almost around three or four hundred thousands and our population in 1999 is a uh, it's not, uh, it's under 1 million population uh, comparing to now is right now we are 1.3 population. So in the difficult then, uh, uh, then under the Security Council and uh, uh, approve the resolution and to have an, uh, <clears throat> come to for have a uh, uh, United Nations uh, administration. Uh, for and uh, mandated by UN Security Council, the UN can carry on administration in Timor Leste for only two years. After the 1999, our country in Timor Leste been destroyed all the situation in the territory. We don't have any institution to, to speak of. We need to uh, build up our uh, reconstruction or rebuilding our country, but nothing is available, no any uh, resources available. So then uh, UN decided and under mandate of the uh, of the UNTAYET, uh, then uh, carry on the uh, administration for two years and uh, uh, was uh, one of the candidates, uh, uh, His Excellency Sergio Verdamelo is from Brazil and uh, was appointed, nominated to uh, to be lead the United UNTAYET in Timor administration in Timor Leste. And uh, because of the two years uh, supposed to be is very short and uh, our uh, leader, especially uh, the leader of former resistance leader, Sanana Guzmão, and also uh, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, uh, Ramon Sorta at that time is a spokesperson on behalf of the Timor-Lese, trying to convince the United Nations that is uh, supposed to be not uh, adopted only for two years, UN administration in Timor Leste in order to uh, to preparing or uh, to restore peace and order and law and order and start to rebuilding for uh, our institution to function uh, in area of education, health, something. But uh, United Nations uh, uh, through the uh, P5, uh, they continue uh, to be with two years. Then in uh, the, we start uh, uh, for nice and building for reconstruction of uh, Timor Leste in in the twenty of May in the twenty of May uh, in two thousand and two. That is the uh, then the, from nineteen ninety nine up to two thousand and uh, and two uh, two or two. Then uh, United Nations formally hand over Timor Leste is internationally recognized as a we restore Timor Leste independence and uh, 
Timor Leste flag went up, uh, then United Nations flag went down. So what happened after that? And so then we start from the first constitutional government. As you know, that I is as explaining early all the audience that is uh, because of 1999 and country also totally destroyed and something. And so within two years, then hand over by United Nations. So we have to start for the first government to reconstruct it, uh, our nation with uh, very limited resources, very limited resources. And so we come with the uh, first constitutional government the annual budget at that time is only around 68 million. So you all imagine if uh, the country would have a, a smaller uh, for 68 million to, for to function in the, in all the institution and in education, install the government, the level of municipality uh, and everything, the health sector and everything, while we have to preoccupy them we must be have a healing the wound between internal of uh, uh, Timor Leste, uh, the factions and political faction, and also we have to reconcile with the those of the militia who cross the border and keep staying at the border, um, and uh, we have to plan for the external reconciliation with the uh, Indonesian military. So that was very difficult situation. But uh, our first gov constitutional government committed and how to manage, how to manage this budget and uh, trying to start and uh, uh, develop the country, but it's uh, in, even in difficult situation. Then they uh, come up between 2030 and uh, 2003, 2003, 2005. Then uh, we, in 2005, uh, the, uh, the constitutional government uh, have a much more access from our uh, Timor Leste oil sources. It's called petroleum farm from the offshore oil, what we call is Bayundan, to get uh, some more starting to have get the royalty uh, from the, that, but not still not much yet. And uh, uh, they start to have some uh, uh, add more budget at that time is up to from 68 up to around 97, around 100 million uh, for a year. And so, because without of this all preparation, and so in a two or six, uh, uh, as you know, that is the most of the, uh, our national police uh, was is around a, almost 50, 60% is a uh, former Indonesian police service. That was is a, a, in a Timor Leste National Police. And uh, on the other half, uh, our uh, guerrilla, guerrilla fighter transformed into to be a conventional, uh, regular military. Uh, it's not easy with no experiences in any administration. That's why we have in 2006, we have a, a little problem for civil unrest and between the police and the military because of lack of financial resources and everything and uh, uh, human resources which are trying to function in all the institution uh, for visas only for three or four years uh, as a restore uh, uh, our independence, of course, is not easy. Then we have a come with the uh, military crisis uh, at that time between police and the military in uh, 2006. Uh, but after 2006, then uh, uh, we have a, a quite a big uh, problem, very challenging. And uh, uh, our first constitutional government uh, at that time, Prime Minister, our historical leader, uh, Mari Alcateri, uh, was uh, resigned uh, in 2006 because of the crisis. Then uh, uh, replaced by our Nobel Peace Prize, uh, Ramos Sorta. Uh, to be a prime minister, but very brief in 2006 to bring the peace and order, uh, to, to bring back the law and order, uh, to have a back to the normalization. And um, then uh, we continue for, but in 2000 and uh, come to 2007, 2007, uh, then Timor-Leste have a, a general election. 
general election at that time and, uh, and uh, one of the new coalition party is under the uh, leadership of His Excellency Kairala Sanana Guzman uh, and uh, Nobel Prize Vice President Jose Ramuzorta elected as the president in 2007 and the parliamentary election uh, was uh, uh, led by Prime Minister of Sanana Guzman at that time with the coalition and we trying to uh, uh, to normalize our situation. But in, within uh, in, in 2007 to 2008, uh, our uh, uh, annual budget because of the royalty or from the oil is uh, every year is increasing. Then, um, then in 2007 to 2008, uh, all the situation in Timor Leste back and back to normal, and uh, we starting to uh, reinvest our uh, petroleum fund uh, to the all the sector and trying to function in the area of health and education and sending the uh, thousands of students uh, to Cuba and China and also Australia, United States. And, uh, and uh, we trying to our government in two, uh, 2007 and 2008, uh, around uh, the budget, annual budget start up to uh, around 1.2 billion of US dollar a year. So we are able to manage all these things. and. Uh, 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 for money, all this thing, and uh, at, uh, in around 2008, 2009, up to 2011, Timor Leste economy at that time is a rich seven percent. The growth is rich seven percent uh, because of coming the budget. Uh, we have a budget come from financial, come from our oil side, and reinvest and uh, to have a uh, cash money. To especially for the elderly people around uh, up to 60 years old and uh, from 30 uh, US dollar to each person of the elderly uh, family and uh, then increasing uh, to be $50 for uh, all the population and uh, government able to uh, to have a um, uh, uh, to set a, a very strategic policy in the health area for the all Timor Leste population can have access to the health for free. If anyone sick, all the citizens of Timor Leste, if anyone who get ill, uh, either you are have a position or not in position, not member of parliament or not, everyone have an equal right. Can send them to Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia to have a health treatment, all will be covered by the Timor Leste government. Timor Leste government. So at this time, we continue to uh, re-extract, uh, uh, rebuilding uh, our country. Uh, at the same time, we have a facing a difficult situation that otherwise we had to heal in the wounds. But uh, under uh, uh, our historical leader, especially uh, Sanana Guzmão, uh, he is uh, one of the uh, leader uh, of the guerrilla fighters and also he was in prison uh, captured by Indonesian military and put him in prison in Jakarta same as like Nelson Mandela for seven years because of all these experiences of conflict his excellency with full his authority and trying to explain and convince all the people of Timor Leste that is no choice we need to have a we need to resolve our, um, our problem. We have to close the dark chapter, open a new chapter and have a reconciliation with those of the uh, Timor Leste who prefer to uh, incur, continue to, part, to be part of Indonesia and also Indonesian uh, military and then the militias and reconcile with the, all of the Western country which before in 1975 was pushed Suharto to invite uh, Timor Leste. We had to reconcile all of this. And um, uh, it's a challenge, very challenging times. And uh, while we have to heal in the wood between uh, Timorese uh, society, because we, as I explained, planning early that we have a brief war and uh, we need to heal in the wood with the Timor Leste side 
and uh, socializing our concept of the reconciliation to the into the society and everyone can have a uh, accept each other and to forget the past we start for the new life and look forward for our future and uh, one thing is a, is a important is a uh, is a, to i would like to uh, uh, highlight here also because of indonesia at that time also because of come up with the uh, internal situation from the dictatorship transition to the the democracy and even it's not easy and uh, those of the military have been sacrificed the uh, thousand of the military also uh, as a victims uh, in timor leste during the war and uh, and and uh, but uh, because of the big heart of the indonesian military uh, and all the indonesian leader be able be able to reconcile each other and to uh, commit to restore the peace between our neighboring country. And uh, one of, uh, uh, it's quite a miracle uh, because it's the militia pro-Indonesian, they stand in the, close to the border in the West Timor. Uh, but until, uh, uh, until today, they never try any plan or something like that to, uh, to have an attack or Timor-Leste territory or something like that. They all accept the appealing of uh, our leader in Timor-Leste and Indonesian government to have a come together to have a reconciliation and we forget the past, then we can focus to rebuilding our country. The Timor-Leste border in Indonesian border is, a, is good to be exemplary. That is the most peaceful, peaceful border in the world. We never have any conflict since 1999. We start to for reconciliation with the Indonesian government and Timor Leste. Then, uh, uh, then we have a very peaceful uh, something. We cross the people are daily crossing the border. Uh, uh, we crossing the border to visit the family in the western and the west and the western border. Also, they can come into Timor Leste to visit the family there. So then up to, for the, <clears throat> for a, uh, why uh, is important for Tim, uh, Timor-Leste have a, to have a national reconciliation because of the, uh, uh, then uh, uh, the, it, that is a uh, very important because it's a, uh, uh, because you know that is a same as like uh, if uh, in Cambodia uh, from the uh, Paris Peace Agreement, up, uh, come to the win-win policy, uh, totally complete for the Cambodia, have a uh, very uh, uh, stable and uh, impressive for the Cambodian economic growth uh, for almost within 20 years under the Sam Dai Chu, Prime Minister, uh, was a very uh, impressive as a miracle and a genuine leader. Uh, so that is a, one of the important also for the uh, for the Timor Leste to learning from our brother and sister in Cambodia as well, and, um, and there is a many similarity between Cambodia and Timor Leste. So, but is a continue to up to then then be reconstruction, and so we uh, Timor Leste is a, we already have a plan to uh, have an, uh, we finish our maritime boundary, maritime boundary between Australia and Timor Leste. Uh, in 2008, 18, uh, 2018, we finishing our maritime boundary. We, uh, we did, uh, our leader of Sanana Guzmão is uh, one of the uh, who are uh, led the negotiation of maritime boundary, and finally uh, at the at the Hague through the consolidation uh, uh, in the Hague, and then. Australia and Timor Leste finally agree under the United Nations. We signed in 2018, 2018, and uh, up to the two of the Prime Minister and um, Parliament ratified in 2019. Uh, His Excellency, uh, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Deputy Prime Minister uh, Praxokon also attended. While at the same time we celebrate for the 20 years of. Uh, Timor Leste referendum. It was in uh, 2019. So in the 
And uh, up, uh, after this, uh, hopefully because of the pandemic and Timor-Leste also have a plan uh, to uh, starting for the oil processing in Timor-Leste from the offshore oil is a one of the very big oil. Uh, it's called, we call this Bayundan, is a greater sunrise. We call the Bayundan. We plan to pull pipeline and processing oil and gas this in Timor-Leste. Timor-Leste have a, already, we uh, already have a, uh, a proof like a blueprint from 2011 to 2030, uh, a strategic uh, uh, development planning. Um, 2011, 2030, that is planning for Timor-Leste next 2030 to be have a, uh, to be have a middle income. Uh, then we can end by the, all the measurable, the poverty and everything. Uh, but because of due to the pandemic and uh, the negotiation for, to, uh, for the to plan to pull the pipeline from the offshore uh, field, Greater Sunrise, because it's a little bit is a, uh, a stop, but uh, hopefully for the next year and everything will be start to renegotiate. Uh, that is the uh, Timor Leste. Then uh, uh, something that is a rebuilding of uh, uh, Timor Leste. And so here I would like to highlight also for the after the external relations and uh, you know that is a uh, we establish uh, diplomatic mission. Uh, more than 100 countries already. And uh, we established uh, Timor-Leste, established for Timor-Leste embassy, especially in the, uh, in the regions, all the Asian, uh, all the Asian country, we established uh, uh, our diplomatic missions since uh, Timor-Leste 2002, uh, 2002, Timor-Leste very committed not only 2002 or two, since Timor-Leste before the unilateral independence, uh, declare independence, we already, our leader already announced that. So we are uh, eager, desiring to be a member of Southeast Asian nation. Uh, then continue up to, uh, as you check, uh, see in the map, that is a, uh, that is a one island in two nations. The, uh, the half of the island is already has been part of the member of ASEAN. The another island is, and now we still um, uh, already had submit uh, um, the proposal to be a member of ASEAN, but it's almost uh, 11 years now. Uh, 11 years now, then uh, uh, hopefully for the, uh, and congratulations as well, uh, President, Mr. President for, uh, ASEAN is the hammer is in the hand of uh, Samdat Daichu, Prime Minister in Cambodia, uh, plan to chair for the next year. And we believe that for the next uh, chairmanship of Cambodia, uh, not talking about 11 members of ASEAN, but planning to have a uh, 12 member of ASEAN. Maybe think about Papua New Guinea or something like that. <laughs> and we believe that. Uh, so because it's Timor-Leste, because it's a, we are part of this region geographically. And uh, let's say that we are in one house, only different rooms, different rooms. So, and now Timor-Leste, we are hard working and uh, for the under the Asian, for we already uh, have a fact funding mission uh, for the uh, security, political security community. Uh, also fact found the mission delegation from ASEAN in, 19, uh, in two, uh, 2019. Uh, it's already uh, visited Timor-Leste and supposed to be in 2020 and 2021, uh, have a virtual conference for the um, uh, Asian economic community and social cultural community uh, through the virtual under the chairmanship of uh, uh, Vietnam. Uh, in 2020, uh, 2020, but uh, however, we are not uh, uh, supposed to be planned to fact find the mission to Timor Leste, but because of the the border is still closed and lack of lots of restriction or something, then it's not uh, uh, visit Timor Leste yet. Uh, uh, hopefully, for the next year, 
uh, will be under the uh, chairmanship of Cambodia, will have a new plan uh, to cooperate with the uh, uh, Timor-Leste uh, government. Mm. And uh, Timor-Leste also have, uh, just to share a brief uh, highlight a little bit, we are, uh, uh, Timor-Leste is uh, uh, one of the member of, uh, of CPLP. It is a Portuguese uh, language speaking country. Uh, and also Timor-Leste is one of the initiator, uh, initiator and funding uh, what called G7 plus. It's uh, not G20, but G7, small G, then seven plus, not the G20 right now, the last meeting in, in Rome or Europe. Uh, but we are a G20. Is a, we Timor-Leste is initiated and we founding this in capital of Dili. And the headquarter of this uh, capital is the objective of D7 plus is a fragile to fragile. Is a, a most post-conflict country. As a founder is a seven country, post-conflict country. But today uh, and now is uh, 20 country now. 20 country now is the member of G7 plus. And all the, all the capital is uh, funding, uh, is a fund by the funding by Timor-Leste government up to today. Um, and all the secretary administration and meeting and everywhere, conference in ev everywhere is funded by Timor-Leste, by Timor-Leste. So, and uh, in 2019, the one of the eminent of the, uh, G7 Plus, uh, His Excellency Kairala Sanana Guzman visited Phnom Penh and supposed to be to invite uh, uh, Sam Dachdai Chu Hussein uh, as a keynote speaker uh, for in Rwanda, G7 Plus conference in Rwanda, supposed to be happen in uh, 2001, uh, 2020, sorry, 2020 in April but due to the pandemic and it, it has been canceled, but this will continue because it's a, all the member of G7 plus, uh, country of G7 plus, they consider one of the country who was post-conflict country in Southeast Asia is a very important uh, to have a very successful, have a peace building and nice and building and the economy from 1990, uh, 1998 up to, uh, up to 2020 for rich 7% economic growth, it's, it's, it's extraordinary. It's never happened in other post-conflict country. That's why we are all very proud is Cambodia uh, is a one of going to be a role model even in a, uh, the world and also especially for the fragile to fragile country would like to learning more for the Cambodian experiences in the past, present, and the future. And so on, uh, we uh, hopefully for the, uh, for the think tank of 2020, I will inform to uh, the G7 plus and we can cooperate together and to can have a uh, organization uh, for the, then uh, uh, AVA also can share in the experiences uh, of uh, Cambodian to uh, uh, G7 plus as well. Um, so I think is a, this is my uh, uh, presentation. And uh, thank you. And I wait for all the audience or any, if any question or something, I'm ready to, uh, uh, to share it with you. Thank you, Excellency, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Excellency Lupez, a very comprehensive and also uh, forward-looking uh, remarks. Um, I, I have several questions. Um, first, uh, with regards to uh, kind of domestic issues, and then I, I move on to uh, foreign policy and international uh, relation and international politics. Uh, first, um, as you mentioned, it's, it's a long process. It's a long way uh, in uh, peace building and nation building in Timor-Leste. Uh, which is a, a bit similar to what happened in Cambodia over the past three or four decades, right? Um, 
we would like to understand a bit more on on your assessment of the the foundation of peace in Timor Leste. Is it stable? Is it sustainable? Or you can see some uh, factors and causes that may make peace uh, more volatile or fragile, because a lot of cases in the post-conflict countries, uh, the relapse to conflict is quite common. You know, after 10, 20 years, so some country fall back into the conflict trap uh, because of the, the the foundation of peace is not firmly built and and sustained. So uh, this is my first question. So I would like to, to give the floor to you to, to respond to this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Well, very, uh, very uh, good question. Uh, so uh, for Timor Leste, until today, for we building, uh, peace building uh, from uh, 1999 up to uh, up today. Uh, so, and we believe uh, but because of the post-conflict and uh, we need to have the lack of the economic development, social economic development is fundamental, very important one. Uh, and also uh, the second is a uh, geopolitical rivalry. Also is a, uh, is a, is a, is a, is a also is a, have a determined as well, but up to our leader, up to our society, but because you know that Timor Leste is a, we have a uh, uh, very rich natural resources, oil and gas, uh, offshore and uh, offshore and onshore. Uh, then the rest, the gold and everything. So we are focused uh, for internal uh, for internal peace building, and I believe that is a. Until today, let's say that is a for until today, we have a very, uh, very open debate, but is uh, never have any, uh, any group or any uh, other opposition party or something like that to trying to uh, create the chaos uh, within, the, within the country. Uh, so we starting for the uh, reconciliation with neighboring country is already everything should find because of the uh, of the Indonesian also very committed Indonesia already changed from the transition and now transformation to the democracy and uh, so we have a very good uh, diplomatic relation so and now is the internal uh, condition is a we uh, we believe that for the in the next uh, upcoming for after we develop for the oil and gas sectors and other natural resources, then uh, Timor Leste guarantee uh, that is in 2030 will be have a middle income, and because is we are not uh, really uh, as a post conflict country as experience is something as you mentioned, uh, only the little bit things that because of uh, we are too open. Uh, we is not uh, not uh, anyone is uh, uh, false. But uh, after the UN come and we establish our democracy, is uh, even the democracy more than European Union, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the population is only one million, uh, and now it's up to thirteen million. But the political party is more than twenty, almost thirty political party. So uh, this is a make uh, uh, for the uh, the. The uh, when you participate uh, for every elections, and the the vote is a split, and then then the government is not uh, stable to have a, to delivery sustainable development because of you know uh, my uh, excellency that is a, no any other history in the world that is the have a, uh, after the revolution install the democratic liberal democracy, then the economy will reach uh, 7%. Uh, the country will be developed as a modern country, must be uh, gradually uh, to, to gradually develop the democracies under the guidance. We must be based on the nature of the society, our democracy. Uh, 
but because of a the more or less a little bit much more jump over the <laughs> not the base on the nature of the society jump over into the liberal democracy is a good but uh, uh, is a good but it's not uh, not in country of 20 years country of 19 years uh, years old just only teenagers but uh, we believe in commitment for internal reconciliation on the ground is totally everyone accepting each other, no any problem. Even we expecting for the other Timorese who are uh, in the past uh, desiring to continue to part of Indonesia also be reconciled and con continue to appeal. They can all to come back to the Timor-Leste, to the valid Timor-Leste uh, for the future. And uh, so the only thing is uh, and, uh, we have to continue for the political stability internal in Timor-Leste because our institution, military institution is much more strong and stronger, stronger, more function. Our police before have a problem, but it's more stronger now. And, uh, and, uh, and now we focus to how to develop for the job creation for the, for the people of Timor-Leste. That is very important, and uh, and uh, hopefully for the uh, and we believe that is a uh, under Cambodia. Uh, uh, some that they should send for Cambodia also after the pandemic can share in more experiences. That is very important for uh, for Timor Leste to have a war for how come Cambodia within twenty years, within twenty years post conflict country the victim is even worse than Timor Leste. Lost at almost six million from the victims of Vietnam War. Come to the uh, uh, come to the uh, Pol Pot regimes, and uh, Phnom Penh was empty, no any infrastructure, everything. But today is Cambodia. Wow, very impressive. That's why very impressive. That is important to. And that's why we need after the pandemic. We also uh, would like to have a people to people. Uh, uh, cooperation and culture to culture cooperation and more Timor Leste member of parliament, more Timor Leste politicians so, uh, must be come to visit uh, Kampuchea, Cambodia to see the condition of Cambodia. Uh, that is how Cambodia can develop uh, the country very successful, very successful uh, country. That is a uh, that is the uh, my. Uh, <clears throat> and thank, thank you, you uh, Excellency Ambassador. Um, very interesting kind of uh, observation with regard to the uh, sustainability of peace in, in Timor-Leste. Uh, you mentioned about social uh, economic dimension of peace, uh, which is um, kind of ambition to, to uh, realize the Vision 2030, which is also similar to Cambodia Vision 2030. But Timor Leste uh, to achieve middle income country, uh, Cambodia higher higher middle income country, so uh, so uh, it's a bit uh, higher than a middle income country. Um, so um, I, we would like to understand a bit more of uh, the role of uh, private sector in Timor Leste now. Um, Cambodia in the post conflict uh, 1990s, uh, even until early 2000. Uh, the private sector was relatively weak up until in the past 10 years that we can see the, the, the increasing role of the private sector, uh, small, medium enterprises, and some big corporation also, uh, Cambodian corporation that, that started to play a kind of most crucial role in the social economic development. So in the 1990s, we have a joke that this is a uh, NGO-driven economy. So because most of the job offered by NGO, non-governmental organization, you know, and, uh, and now people prefer to work in the private sector, private company, because have better incentive allowances and uh, better uh, prospect uh, for their career. So uh, we would like to understand a bit on the, the, the environment and of the private sector in Timor-Leste now. Yes, yeah, so thank you. Uh, well, uh... Uh, I think it's uh, almost similar uh, before, after the country only uh, 19 years and uh, have a difficult situation. The private sector, the lack of private sector is a, 
uh, also is very difficult too. And uh, mostly the private sector is only the much dependence on the uh, government project. And so if the uh, uh, government project, the budget is annually is available, uh, everyone is on queue, all the private sector is on queue, how to participate for the, for the government project in terms of roads, bridge, and everything uh, up to the uh, rural area. So and now we, uh, government is uh, planning to, uh, to how to uh, put more some, uh, uh, to transfer money from our petroleum fund to the national bank and uh, uh, to have a private sector of Timor-Leste private sector can have access to loan. Uh, uh, if better to have a low rate or something like that, uh, for them to uh, develop of the uh, our especially for the small industry, small industry can have a, that is the only way can support that is government is focused on this to how to uh, something because it's the more or less uh, uh, our oil or petroleum fund is we put in the U.S. Treasury. We need to Parliament must we have to discuss in and analyze to pass the resolution and to have a to change the little bit and to up more how many percent to access the, uh, to get that uh, capital and to put the, uh, that capital to the, uh, uh, the sector of the bank sector. And also we are trying to planning for, to encourage the, especially for the uh, foreign banking, uh, foreign, the bank sectors from the outside to be, uh, to invest in Timor-Leste. Right now Timor-Leste have a, uh, a foreign bank in uh, Timor Leste, like uh, one from Portugal and Australian uh, bank, and um, and also Indonesian bank or something like that. Uh, but it's much more have uh, something because country also the population number of population is uh, small, and so we need to have uh, some uh, the bank and can cooperate into more access and to facilitate the uh, for the private sector in Timor Leste. Because it's a, uh, in order to have a, to uh, to have a, uh, uh, to support financially, uh, then they can carry on the uh, on the business either is formal informal or something like that. Because if the people in rural area is a, still have a difficult to have a cash money uh, or to have a enough budget to to reinvest their budget. To, for to run in the business in the area of the rural level and up to the uh, national level. This is how is the condition. And so we are hard working on this, uh, the government also, and all our, we are as a diplomat and how we're going to, uh, to, uh, to lobbying and to convince the, uh, our friends from, uh, uh, especially Cambodia, uh, because we have a very, uh, uh, close relationship uh, in the past and until today. And so we need to have a more Cambodian business people also can to come to uh, observe or visit and uh, invest in Timor-Leste in the future. And uh, especially area of agriculture, Cambodia is very successful in agriculture, can uh, to have a technical uh, uh, training for to the Timor-Leste agriculture to, in order to have a, uh, for to develop more our sustainability of in the area of the food security as well. Uh, while you are uh, continue to be, be building up the peace, but um, and at the same time, we need to have a social economic sector to support private sector and other sector to have a, uh, to grow uh, in the future. Thank you, Iceland. It's definitely, I think Cambodia is very interested in further deepening uh, relationship with Timor-Leste, government and private sector level. So I think perhaps uh, we have a lot of things for uh, to learn from each other uh, with regard to peace building, nation building, social economic development and so on. So um, I'm pretty sure that after this dialogue, we need to move forward with the involvement of private sector, how we can connect the private sector of the two countries uh, to further advance our national development goal. Um, now, now we, we move to um, uh, foreign policy of uh, of uh, Timor Leste. Uh, you mentioned earlier about 
the the membership application uh, in ASEAN, it has been more than 10 years now. Uh, so far, Cambodia have offered uh, full support to the membership. And of course, uh, ASEAN is consensus-based consensus decision-making. So we need to have the, all the 10 member states to agree. Uh, but Cambodia is uh, kind of uh, the most supportive <laughs> of, of uh, membership of Timor-Leste. So hopefully uh, next year uh, we can uh, realize this uh, membership of Timor-Leste when Cambodia uh, is uh, become a rotating chair of ASEAN next year. So um, uh, your, for, your foreign policy, of course, is evolving very fast. Uh, you mentioned uh, geopolitical tension, competition, and how it affects uh, Timor-Leste in terms of also peace and stability there. Um, some basic uh, kind of principles and core values and strategy of Timor-Leste, because I think uh, many uh, audience here are perhaps not so much aware of uh, uh, your for the foreign policy uh, guidelines or principles of uh, Timor Leste. Could, could you share maybe three points uh, that you think uh, represent uh, Timor Leste foreign policy? Well, uh, Timor Leste foreign policy is a, uh, the first is one if uh, uh, that is a, we are uh, a zero enemy. Every man is friend, non alliance. Uh, for Timor Leste foreign policy, so uh, uh, um, and uh, we uh, we are a member of uh, uh, like uh, in two, uh, 2005 and uh, uh, Timor Leste start to be uh, member of ARF, uh, uh, is a regional forum uh, association of regional forum uh, ARF and uh, also our uh, um, and uh, CPLP and come up to the uh, uh, the um, uh, G7 plus and we preparing it in, uh, since uh, 2011 uh, under the strong uh, advocacy of uh, Indonesian uh, at that time was uh, Susilo Bamba Nidono, the uh, president and very uh, supporting and uh, Timor Leste started formally submit the application uh, for uh, for uh, uh, for uh, to uh, to be a member of ASEAN. Uh, so, and in this context, and uh, for uh, 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 Timor Leste foreign policy is ASEAN is a priority. Uh, is a very priority for uh, that. Why we until today we continue. Uh, to how to approach all the members of Asian country because of uh, uh, the reason of fundamentally geographically is uh, how come we are in a one house, uh, only different room, but uh, and the one another room is not recognized. We are in this house. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a much, and we believe that is a, that is the, the most important one. The other region is important, but in diplomacy, but the, your neighboring is the number one, that is Timor-Leste uh, foreign policy. And now we, how do we can hard working uh, in our level of ministerial level and uh, minister of foreign affairs and uh, the team also, and now is hard working in capital and trying to, uh, to cooperate with all the member of ASEAN. Uh, and then uh, only the, the way things for, uh, uh, we uh, put in belief that is a, can uh, uh, under the rotating uh, chair by Cambodia, can be Cambodia much more have a war, even consensus uh, decision based, but uh, uh, at least Cambodia uh, understand the picture of uh, how is the post-conflict country and facing the, uh, the difficulty uh, of during the, uh, during the war and up to development in terms of the uh, uh, in terms of social economy, we need to have a, a time to develop our country, infrastructure also we need to have a, all this kind of the diplomacy uh, and uh, we, the base we are uh, uh, in all the diplomatic mission and to try to continue to explain uh, to all the other, our country partners and partners all over the world, but especially for the Asian country. 
thank you uh so yeah that, that is some some kind of uh, high hope um next year for the membership of timor Leste. but perhaps you need to convince singapore <laughs> <laughs> because uh, so Singapore is uh, is the most uh, quite reluctant and cautious uh, with regards to the membership of Timor Leste. Um, next is uh, with regards to uh, job, because you know job protocol uh, environment in the region also affect peace and nation building in in every country in Southeast Asia, including Cambodia and Timor Leste. Uh, so how you foresee the ongoing job protocol tension competition? And how does it affect small state like like Timor Leste, and and how you you uh, address or deal with this kind of uh, volatile, uh, competitive, uh, somehow confrontational geopolitical uh, landscape? Yes. Yeah, so well, uh, Timor Leste, uh, as you say, we have a zero enemy. Timor Leste government continue to appeal for the all giant country, all giant country. That is the because we had an experiences of the war in the past. Uh, we love the peace. We need to have a peace. Then everyone in this planet Earth can have a access to have a, uh, to develop their own country to get the prosperity. Uh, then then we'll be in the future can have a, at least same as like a country like in Europe or like in the United States, like in China. We are all dreaming of this and something. So we continue to appeal for the, or the geopolitical competition is a, we believe that not uh, their competition to bring more impact to uh, the country such as a small country like Timor-Leste or in the region as well. We are totally, uh, totally continue to appealing for the those of the giant country uh, today because it's very tension uh, between political, uh, geopolitical rivalry or something like that, and our leader, uh, even in formal, is not informal. Uh, His Excellency Ramos Orta, Nobel Peace Prize, Sanana Guzman, our leader, Mari Alcateri, they are all a very uh, visionary uh, leader in the world. Uh, so they all is continue to appealing for the all the giant country to uh, for to have an, uh, to reduce uh, the uh, to reduce the territorial ambition or any. Uh, to trying to uh, uh, to um, to create the um, uncertainty uh, uncertainty security in the region because that is will be bring the impact of the uh, foreign investors uh, to uh, our country. For example, like if any if any China would like to invest in Timor Leste, then the other country also. That why is China or something like that? <laughs> but everyone we want for everyone is our friend. Can China will can come to invest in our country? United States can come, or even from Iraq they can come to invest, or even from um, Afghanistan anywhere in the country. We are all the friends. That's why the, we need to reduce that then they can come and we can uh, to invest in our country and on the uh, vice versa, you know. Uh, so that is uh, Timor Leste position uh, right now and uh, to evolve. And uh, our leader always mentioned appeal, even like uh, Jose Ramos Horta recently also. Uh, he won, uh, uh, he went to Rome and have a conference continue to appeal for the and met the Pope and with the other Nobel Peace Prize just uh, very last month uh, and also continue to appeal for the giant country uh, to reduce the, uh, the ambitions and more uh, dialogue, more cooperative. That is good for the, uh, uh, especially for the small country. Otherwise we, we all will become a victims. We are unable to develop our economy. If that is happened, and no any foreign investors as well because it's mostly giant country who are is a part of the FDI. Then FDI is dominant by them. If if the any competition or become a, any war happen, then uh, we will this bring the huge consequences uh, to the region, especially for the small country. Thank you very much, Excellency.
um, we have about uh, uh, 10 minutes or so uh, before we conclude our second public lecture series. And there's a number of questions here with regards to uh, peace and nation building, demolished and foreign policy, because it's kind of uh, closely interconnected. Um, uh, perhaps we, we, we would like to seek, seek your advice uh, based on your experience and wisdom from uh, Timor Leste with regard to the situation in Myanmar now, uh, which is on the verge of civil war. Uh, some or even call it the current situation is already in the state of civil war. And this is the member of ASEAN, and we want to offer assistance to support each other in terms of peace building and nation building. As you said, uh, uh, we uh, belong to the same family uh, under the same roof. And now Myanmar is in trouble and we need to offer support to the people of Myanmar. Uh, or what can uh, uh, they uh, do in order to restore peace, stability and continue their nation building process? Maybe some, some advice from you uh, on the Myanmar. Yeah, so thank you. I think it's a, it's a very important and uh, for uh, we cannot continue to be watching while our neighboring house is under fire. Yeah, if we neighbor and house is under fire and we are concerning about for the situation all in Myanmar and uh, so we uh, in Timor Leste experiences also Cambodian experiences, I think is a much more important for the when uh, the next uh, Cambodian rotating chair, I think is a the presidency of ASEAN, I think it's Cambodia can share in the experiences to the, our brother and sister in Myanmar, how they have to, can have an inclusion dialogue to the all parties. It's very important to find the uh, peace solution. And comparing to us, like uh, Timor-Lese, Timor-Lese also have a very difficult situation. You cannot, while you're killing each other with your brother and sister and your neighboring country, how are you going to, we forgive each other is not meaning that we are not uh, uh, we are not uh, we have to impunity or those of the perpetrator will be free or something like that but it's mean like a, it's a, to be a footnote remembrance or continue to something but because of the uh, building pieces uh, and not only in one side like in Timor Leste we have an internal problem uh, as well but we able sharing we have to come and uh, all party come and take initiative talk we dialogue what is the good solution and have a win-win win-win solution win-win solution and also and i believe that is a for in a uh, in this context also timor Leste and cambodia have a because we are direct uh, have a uh, in the past have a civil war and a post-conflict up to today and uh, still have a very fresh, uh, fresh experiences. And uh, then we can share to share to our, uh, uh, our uh, neighboring country in uh, Myanmar or something like that. So, uh, because it's, uh, uh, they, uh, when talking about the reconciliation is not easy. Uh, that is a must we have a, a, have a country or something like that uh, can have an experiences, even Timor Leste, before we had a reconciliation, much more uh, be learning from uh, uh, South Africa as well. At that time, it's Nelson Mandela, uh, able for the apartheid or something like that and come because the country interest, uh, we need to have a prosper, our people need to have a uh, free from our country, uh, then uh, have a, to have a good democratic country is a very important when we have to dialogue to each other. So uh, I believe uh, uh, that is uh, next year for the under chairmanship of Cambodia can share in more or can uh, have an opportunity our leader like uh, Sanana Kuzmao or our leader like Ramos Horta Nobel Peace Prize can uh, uh, we can have a cooperate or uh, even cooperate with the think tank. Uh, we can find a solution to supporting for, uh, for our friends in Myanmar, um, because it's otherwise the situation will become a, uh, worse if a, if a situation continue to be a, a huge civil war, it will be difficult, even very hard for us to resolve. Even in the region, ASEAN and also cannot do much anything. 
ecosystem. Uh, that's why we need to have an, a very, uh, uh, very serious, based on the experiences uh, in Timor Leste. Uh, that is a uh, no any other way. Uh, we need to have a uh, um, approach to the, especially for the uh, for the uh, those who are the the winners of the election, especially for the uh, Aosan Suki. Because Aosan Suki is a is a key leader, is a key leader in Myanmar. The how important can the uh, actual uh, actual uh, uh, government, uh, the, the, they call this de facto government or something, can have a, to dialogue with the, especially the Aosan Suki and other partners, then they have a seat together and sharing, same as like a, in Timor Leste, we sharing all the power. If have a potential potential to uh, uh, to disagree with our concept of development, we have to take them in inclusive government. Even in other job can be sharing in NGO or any other something like that. Same as like a, how it's some that's like two saying uh, do it in Cambodia is the same thing. Uh, win win policy. The win win policy is also very effective. Uh, can be to be. Uh, to be not uh, to copy, but it's still uh, the model to share in these experiences in something. And also in Timor Leste uh, side as well. And uh, otherwise it's difficult. No any, uh, no any alternative must be within uh, our brother and sister Myanmar must be have a, uh, uh, have a courage and a brave and love the country based on our nationalism, we have to resolve uh, between ourselves. No one else outside country will come to resolve our problem. The first is must be uh, uh, the people uh, in Myanmar first. And, uh, and to, uh, to have uh, any connection or any interest of outside country, we must be neglect everything. The priority is our people first. We are the leader here. We are our leader. We have to sit together first. No thinking about outside people because outside people is sometimes not bring any fresh wind, windy or something like that. No fresh air for our country. Must be even in Timor Leste also the same uh, experiences. Last uh, in our reconciliation, some um, some giant country they trying to influence Timor Leste bring the influence uh, no good for the reconciliation total reconciliation must be with the justice and to bring the all the general perpetrator from indonesia to the international court but timor leste decided no enough enough is sega enough we are not bring anyone because if we want we to uh, take those of this uh, uh, military to the international court of justice we have to take the Western uh, to the, take them to the court first, because you are supporting them to uh, invite us because of the Cold War or something like that and, um, and et cetera. So that's why there is, it's up to our own people, our own leader. That's why our leader in Timor-Leste also have a very huge differences come from the resistance side, we also have a problem, internal problem, very huge differences. Some uh, have a left, some right, some middle, and, uh, but we able uh, because of the, uh, for the, our country uh, to liberate from the, anyone outside country. So then we able to continue see together. And today we are very peaceful very peaceful or something like that is a we are uh, hoping for uh, for uh, too soon for the next year will be start to do something for our uh, our brother and sister in myanmar thank you excellency i i, I hope that the g7 plus that you mentioned is a very uh, i think very good mechanism uh, in order to engage myanmar uh, to bring stakeholders from myanmar from different factions to the dialogue. Sure. So either you can have it in Cambodia on the sideline of ASEAN submit meeting, that would be good in order to draw uh, ASEAN attention and international attention. And we can 
have some event next year on the Sinai ASEAN summit, uh, talking about post-conflict uh, 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 conflict resolutions and nation building, uh, peace building and so on. So I think this is a, this would be a great contribution of Timor-Leste to peace. Sure, so sure. the uh, kind of peace diplomacy that, that you have a great advantage in advancing peace diplomacy in the region so that that is a great opportunity, and AVI is uh, willing and happy uh, to cooperate with uh, your embassy uh, to do something together next year. Uh, and um, just to uh, to um, have uh, some key highlights uh, with uh, with regard to your perspective on Myanmar's inclusive dialogue, uh, forgiveness, uh, putting people first, sure. win-win uh, national reconciliations. Sure, sure. And of course, the national ownership. Uh, uh, don't expect others to help you. You need to help yourself. Exactly. So uh, peace and stability is in your hands uh, of the Myanmar people. Sure. So that is the message that Ambassador uh, Lupez uh, wished to send to our uh, Myanmar friends today. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can have a breakthrough next year uh, to promote condition, to create condition for dialogue. Uh, uh, between the uh, different parties in Myanmar. So with that uh, positive note, uh, we would like to bring our uh, second uh, lecture of the Think Tank 2022 to a close. And for uh, your information, uh, the Think Tank 2022 is uh, sponsored by uh, the Universal Peace Federation. And we are the Secretariat of uh, Think Tank 2022 Asia Pacific. And we, today we have great honor once again to have Ambassador Lupez to share his wisdom, uh, experiences and perspective on peace, nation building and Timor-Leste and what Timor can do more to contribute peace from, uh, from a peace recipient to a peace standing country. So that is a kind of a very uh, insightful uh, remarks by Ambassador Lupez. And thank you once again, Ambassador. Uh, we wish you uh, good health, stay safe, and uh, healthy. Uh, hope to catch uh, to meet you in person. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank so you. thank you uh, for those who attended our uh, dialogue, and this will be uh, put in our YouTube channel as well, so you can refer to our dialogue in the future. So thank you very much, Ambassador. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.